Okay, so I had to do a quick video regarding uh, the heat wave. So not the US heat wave, um, as much as it may be talked about next week. Um, I think this week is actually talking about the uh, heat waves happening in Europe. And uh, the reason for this is that there's already uh, food supply issues. And uh, this is titled coming out by the European Commission. Uh, news and announcement, 18 July 2022, Joint Research Centre. Droughts in Europe in July 2022, almost half of EU plus UK territory at risk. It's half of Europe is uh, at risk of uh, drought. And what does this mean? Well, according to... 44% <laughs> of EU and UK. 9% um, of EU and UK... Uh, for the drought levels, uh, soil moisture deficit and uh, vegetation stress, which means crop yields are going to be down um, big time. Um, this is in comparison, 44% this year compared to 19% um, to 22% between up to 2020. So it's like double the normal risk levels historically. So this is uh, water resource issues also associated with this. And there's water sh uh, sharing also, but uh, the big uh, one that's been getting news is the Po River Basin. And it's the highest level of drought severity. Um, and I was also reading about the UK. Um, it's going to have 40 degree temperatures celsius that's 100 and something uh fahrenheit in the states it's not super uncommon but that's the heat wave that's also happening in the states southern states you gotta understand that the uk is um further north than uh the united states sort of um it sh normally would get colder uh temperatures but because it's uh getting ocean effect it uh, has warmed up a bit usually but in this case it's uh just unusually um high and the reason why this is notable is not because the temperatures and people feeling a little sweaty uh, it's due to the crop failures themselves um, so this is why I'm actually talking is you need to check out European crop uh, damage from heat stress and otherwise that's the thing to uh, look out for um, because of drought conditions, uh, it was bad in Italy, but now it's uh, spreading to Iberian Peninsula, where that's Spain and Portugal, uh, France, Germany, Poland. Um, basically, I think all the... What isn't? Maybe Northern Europe isn't as affected, like Scandinavia. Um, Russia apparently has a little bit more production. Uh, Ukraine doesn't really count as much because they don't have normal growing, but uh, they say they. This is from the BBC, so they say the UK heat wave, Leicester Shire, Leicester, probably Leicester or something. I don't know how to do the Chester Shires. Um, so it says um, you Leicester Chester Shire sauce, Leicester Chester Shire. Um, I think it's Leicester. But they're they're actually worried that crops are going to start on fire. So it's not just crop failures per se, but this guy Will Oliver, he has a two thousand acre farm, and he's like saying they also have poultry, uh, wheat, and maize. Maize is the corn basically, because corn in the UK is like wheat. Sometimes anything that's grain is corn, so they use the term maize. Um, but it's only 36 degrees they're expected there, but uh, they're expecting it to be really costly, and they bought water, um, basically their own fire engines um, to put out fires or maybe water, I don't know. Um, but there, any fire on these sites would, it's not only the loss of the crop, but it shuts that farmer down. Um, if they're not covered for that type of uh, farm uh, failure, you may have crop insurance for um, lower yields, but those same insurance 
plans for crop insurance may not cover the crop starting on fire. Um, that's just one example. The BBC is uh, following this, so in the mainstream they are following these issues. Um, they're expecting to lose 13% of their wheat um, for the EU. Oh, Italy is expected to lose 13%, and Britain's expected to lose 12%. So these things, like, you know, losing 10% here, 10% there, 10% here, um, it, it affects exports, obviously. Um, normally, exports would be affected first, or export bans would, would come into play. But this has been happening for a while now, and it's sort of peaking at uh, very high levels. And it's, well, it is the middle of summer. Well, almost the middle of summer. But in addition to the heat, uh, UK is also suffering uh, rainfall uh, absence, so lack of rain. Uh, it's the lowest levels in 26 years, so since the 1990s. So between the heat and the loss of water, it's causing a drought and very dry conditions. I think that's all that needs to be said here and so that you need to pay attention to what's going on with this. Like in Spain, normally they do have hot temperatures, hot dry summers, but 47 degrees, like 120 Fahrenheit, whatever it happens to be, um, there, it's a, it's an issue. And they're saying there was the 1976, um, heat wave. And they're saying that, this will make that 1976 freak summer um, look like nothing. Uh, so they're expecting it to be a lot worse. It's, it's insane, actually. Rail lines are melting. I'm not sure why they would be melting. but uh, And wildfire season. I've heard nothing about the wildfire season at all um, in North America. I haven't heard anything. Um, but I am about to, I think. Is there actual wildfires happening? Normally there would be. California would be burning. Um, but I don't think... In the West, I guess, um, oh, everything's burned down already, maybe. Uh, it's, they're talking about Europe, so they're saying heat apocalypse in France. A fire's been blazing uh, over the weekend. So they're not even talking about, about uh, fires in North America, but if you look at the... They're saying that in North America, fires may last weeks due to the heat. Um, so Business Insider is covering this, but it's not much... Um, talked about here. So extreme heat is straining Texas power grid and fueling Yosemite fires. It's forecast to last two more weeks. Yeah, it's, uh, again, it's, it doesn't seem that bad, but uh, Europe, North Africa, Middle East, and China are experiencing multi-week extreme heat. It is the summer, but they're expecting this heat wave to last, let's check this, nearly the entire month of July. So it's not like this couple days, but they're expecting it to last this entire, for the rest of the month. Um, and obviously, ERCOT and other grid operators are likely taking into account the increased AC use. But uh, last week, 50 million people were put under heat alert, which is, what, uh, six of the U.S. population or something like that. It's like one in eight people or something. One in seven people. 
but it has dropped. Um, but I think they're expecting it to go up even more. And they're expecting it for the two thirds of the Western US. That's a big chunk of the US under at the heat wave. But it doesn't actually look so bad. Ah, but that's the other thing you're not hearing about. You're hearing passing references to Lake Mead um, drying up. But it was supposed to go Deadpool um, with this heat wave. I'm wondering if it's accelerating the Deadpool dates. <laughs> so yesterday, today. So these are some headlines for Lake Mead. Lake Mead, once the largest water reservoir in the U.S., now little more than a graveyard. Or this is San Diego Union Tribune. What will happen if Lake Mead dries up? It's not if Lake Mead dries up. It's almost a given now, unless they uh, figure out a way to get more in. But uh, the, it's not game over yet, but uh, it's looking grim. And are people starting to talk about this? People are talking about growing. They're talking about how stuff is visible. They seem to want to draw back a lot of mainstream into World War II, World War II boats, um, a landing craft or something like that. But uh, a lot of places are covering the fact that a boat is visible, but they're not really talking about the fact that the powers kind of go off. And, oh man, that's crazy. <laughs> A fish just sort of stuck in the cracked ground. Um, yeah, and 40 million people are going to not have water supply. So that's that's the story, not the World War II boat. Um, that might be a you know third page story, fourth page story, but the story is that 40 million people are going to be out of water and power. It's... Uh, bad news for that entire area and you think there would be like you know how you have the deck clock and uh, body count sites there really ought to be a uh, Lake Mead um, Deadpool site if it doesn't already exist because it's dropped 52 meters since 1983 that's a uh, you know, probably getting close to 100 yards, uh, maybe not quite that much, maybe like uh, 75 yards or something, but a football field of water is sort of, um, you know, long distance to drop, considering this is over a wide, wide, wide expanse. But they say, yeah, it's, it's, it's massive. Is it a story? It's still a story. Do, do, do. Um, but they're not, not, they're trying to get the human element on this and talking about how uh, the visual image, but it's really trivializing uh, an issue that is a collapse ensuing for a large chunk of the United States um, and could cause relatively high uh, environmental refugee issues for these uh, states that are affected. But they're not really laying this out. Like, do you think there would be a national crisis um, set up for this? If you said the power's going to go off to the third of the U.S. next year and nobody's going to have water, um, that's a national crisis right there. And if you see it coming a year or two in advance, you think you'd uh, be ringing alarm bells. Um for these water levels because it's not trivial but no they'd rather talk about a boat <laughs> being visible um that's just crazy
because if anything's going to cause this recession to get even worse or the um, cr food crisis issue to get worse, it's going to be the Colorado River not supplying water to people or electricity or otherwise. Um, Because this is not an insignificant issue. But is it getting any coverage? Okay, so this is today. Essential California. This is Los Angeles Times. We're out of time on the Colorado River crisis. Um, a couple days ago, scientists have long warned of Colorado River crisis. USA Today. Last month. Feds warn Lake Mead, Colorado River, dangerously low. CNN, the Southwest's unchecked thirst for Colorado River water could prove devastating upstream. This is a month ago, but nobody's talking about it now. What's going on? Just Los Angeles uh, Tribune, or what was it, Los Angeles Times? Los Angeles Times. That's it. So everybody else has moved on to the boat story. Huh, okay, well, there's, they're talking about undersea hoses. <laughs> I was, I was thinking a uh, Mississippi pipeline um, a while back, just joining the Mississippi River up. China would do something like that. That's sort of crazy. So this is one of the solutions. West water solution. How about an undersea hose from Pacific Northwest rivers down the coast? Yeah, diverting rivers. Nonetheless, this is dragged on with me not really talking too much, but um, the thing was you crops... Uh, thousands of people have died from heat issues, but um, the the crop issue is looking worse and worse with every week or couple of weeks. It's just uh, it's getting worse and worse and worse. Um, there's already a food crisis. Uh, I'm curious. I haven't looked into this yet. But uh, China has stocked up a lot. So what's happening with their crops this year? He's talking about higher pork prices. Um, yep, nothing. Wow. You type in uh, China crop failures and you end up getting stuff from everywhere but China. Oh uh, yeah, here's not from last year. Oh wow, okay, this is uh, from 2021 October, so uh, almost a year ago, uh, eight months ago or something. Crop failure is nearly five times more likely by 2030. At least 72% of the global production of each of the four staple crops occurs in five countries. And what five countries are these, you might ask? China, the US, India, Brazil, and Argentina. And which of those are BRICS countries? China, India, Brazil, and uh, believe it or not, Argentina is also applied. So of four of the five countries are BRICS countries. For 72% of the global production of the four staple crops. 72% of the crops of the world, except for the US, all the other countries are BRICS countries. <laughs> and uh, they're expecting a lot of crop failures. Nonetheless, it's early in the game still. It's not 2030 yet. So what does that say? We're not even at the peak of the solar cycle. Um, the world is still doing really good, but um, this is really looking grim. And uh, that EU Commission article is what uh, had me do this spiel, is that... Uh, 
it, it's way more issues. It's normally that, but hydropower reserves too. 